Dave is itching to talk about the Rob Main event. We'll get into that later, Dave. No, we, we must. Talk. We it's, must. Dave, was trust me on this. I know, but trust me on this one. We're, we're going to wait two hours, so, I'm, so by the time we get there, I, 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 I won't care anymore. Oh, you'll care. I'll, I'll make you care. Oh, believe me. That, All that, anybody that wants to talk event. about are these ratings, Dave. We are doing a disservice to not start with these ratings. Okay, we can start with... What do you want to know about the ratings? What do you want to talk about about the ratings? I got a million different things that I can talk about. Well, in case people are living under a rock, tell everybody what happened on Friday night. Um, neither side hurt Neither side hurt the other. And we had a, we had a thing, and, uh, you know, um, WWE had more viewers, and AW won the demo in the, in the head-to-head half hour, and some people are in complete denial, and I mean... Well, let's talk about the numbers very quickly. So 866,000 viewers for the SmackDown show. Yes. Rampage, 578,000 viewers. So it looks like a pretty big difference. Yes. In the 18 to 49 demo, both shows drew a .24. Yeah. So um, it was essentially a tie, but WWE was 314 and AEW was 313. But in the head-to-head... Um, which is really the only key thing they had to head AEW one, and um, I was surprised. Um, I wasn't shocked after you know getting some of the markets yesterday. I kind of, I kind of, exp- I knew it was going to be close, and it was it was fairly close. It was was it um, three twenty five to two? What was the number two eighty eight or something? The head-to-head battle was uh, at 10 to 10, 15. It was 363,000 to 272, advantage yeah. AEW. 10, 15 to 10, 30 was 293 to 293, although the tie is slightly unfair because there were six minutes of commercials during that uh, quarter hour for AEW, whereas for SmackDown, it was commercial-free. There were no commercials, right. So um, if you factor out the commercials... Um, and this number is not exact. We will have the exact number tomorrow, but it appears that it would have been 327 for AEW if you take out the commercial time. So, um, yeah. So, so I mean, <sighs> Roman Reigns came off looking pretty bad. No, and that's and that's a very minor story, but he did. Uh, Tony Khan came off looking pretty good. He he predicted the win. Which most people did not think he would get, including me. Although I mean, I, I knew it would be competitive, but I didn't think that they would win. I did think they would win with men. I didn't think they would win with women. They actually won with women, one hundred three to one hundred one. It's essentially a tie. But the fact that they did that with, when you look at, you know, what each side offered. You know, you had Becky Lynch against Sasha Banks on one side, and. Punk against Matt Seidel on the other, and it was a pretty big win for AEW. And then the other one, which was Ruby Soho and the Bunny against the contract signing. Ah, man. So anyway, you can, you know, the the thing is, is that when um, AEW started... WWE was in the middle of a match with Becky Lynch and, and uh, Sasha Banks, and they did not lose viewers, so it was not like people tuned in and left. Um, there were ten thousand. They were ten thousand down in eighteen forty nine. So there were some. There were some, not a lot, but there were you know like three percent. I think it is um, of viewers. You know, probably left. Um, as far as in 18 to 49, but they were made up by probably more older viewers that didn't leave. Essentially, what we found out, and also, um, you know, AEW started with with its biggest audience of the entire hour uh, for the punk match. So essentially, these are two shows, and, you know, this is very different from the Monday Night Wars. I think the key thing with the Monday Night Wars is, is that in the Monday Night Wars, um, and even in the Tuesday Night Wars, that we had a couple weeks ago. This was very different. Um, in the Monday Night Wars, people watched both shows. They flipped back and forth. I mean, a lot of people watched only one, but there was a big swing. You know, when one would go to a commercial, that's where they, you know, um, when one would have a good match, when Bill Goldberg would be on the air, when Ric Flair would be on the air, when Austin would be on the air. You know, people would flip back and forth. Um, and we, you know, here 
and this is this is interesting because it was not the case on Tuesday, but here you didn't have that. You had each side has its audience, and they're they're pretty good. I mean, like, look, uh, SmackDown was number three for the night behind two football games, both on ESPN. So that you know. Essentially, it was the early game and the late game. SmackDown went against the early game. Um, AEW went against uh, the end of the early game and the beginning of the late game. Um, SmackDown, I mean, uh, Rampage was fourth. Although, if you want to look at a point two four, they should a point two four. What's more impressive? Uh, a point two four from eight to ten thirty, or a point two four from ten to eleven? A uh, point two four from ten to eleven is far more impressive. So, I mean, AEW won the night um you know whoever won in the half hour i was going to say won the night aw and it doesn't matter i mean if they lost the night they still benefited they still you know it was still great strides for the week just being close given the situation but they won the night um and not you know so so that's that but the bigger thing here is and this is the much bigger thing is that um you know there's a trajectory People saw it a year ago. I'm trying to remember when I first wrote it. It was it was more than a year ago. It was um, August of 2020. I remember writing the article about what was going to happen, um, and it happened. Um, you know, not you know, it, it's it it went from being pretty one side to a dog fight. I said that head to head, if SmackDown and um, and AEW were head to head. Um, under what I would call, you know, equal circumstances, one not on network, both on cable or both on network, that uh, SmackDown would win in total audience, which it did, and AEW would win in 18 to 49, which it did, head to head. So um, that's where we're at right now. Um, the th the, but the key to all this is that um, WWE needs to make major changes. Because the idea that a company that is 13 times the size financially of the other company is fighting head-to-head -head and losing um, or coming close, whatever, you know, it's, it's even, even being even, even if they were winning close, um, that has this kind of a, you know, you know, tenure in the market and, you know, I mean, no, this, this has never happened before. Um I mean, I cannot come up with one example of this in sports where somebody did this and in two years they, they got here. And, you know, some of it is AEW is doing a lot of stuff really well. And you can tell, you watch the show, you can hear the fans and all that, okay? But the other part of it is, you know, I watch these two shows and I, it's it's just the, there's a lack, you know, there's a lack of excitement in WWE when I watch it, even when they do good stuff. Um, there's a few characters that are over, most aren't, and the problem, but they've got real problems in the sense that they view wrestling, and a lot of people do, they view wrestling in a certain way and only one way, and wrestling's changed, the audience has changed, the younger audience, like, look, they got the over 50 audience, big, and they'll have that forever because what AEW does doesn't appeal to that audience for the most part, um, and you know, them trying to be like this stuff that they do on NXT or what they're going to try to do next, which is we got to go back to the Attitude Era. It's like you're going to go back to 1999 to to um, for a fight in 2022. I mean, it's like that, that's not going to work. And what the, the, the basic thing is, is and this is this, this is this, the situation more than anything else. Vince needs to open his mind and also have an honest person as his underling. And he'll never have that because everyone's afraid to get fired. But he needs to have an honest person. That person needs to tell him, Vince, the reason we're losing is because they're putting on a better product than us. They appeal to the audience more than we do. And whatever advantages we do have is based on tenure and the fact that we're the name brand and um our increase our our advantage over them is vast is is very quickly dwindling and will dwindle even more and it will go the other way if we don't figure out with this audience in 2022 and 2023 and 2024 
wants to see. If we keep feeding them what we've been feeding them, it's changed. And, you know, our idea of talent needs to change. I mean, this freaking Adam Cole, and I've said this a million times, but every time I think about Adam Cole and Aleister Black watching them on that TV, I mean, and, and just going like, Vince never saw Aleister Black. And granted, I can't say that I saw Aleister Black at that level either. I, 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 I saw him at a much higher level than WWE, than Vince did. But I didn't know that, I didn't know that he would be at this level. Adam Cole, I can't say that. Adam Cole, I saw, I saw him four years ago at this level. So that's, you know, um, the idea that they had him, the idea that they wanted to make him a manager and they wanted to cut his hair and they wanted him to manage Keith Lee and that's what they saw him as 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 his most valuable role for for being a big time player. It's like I, it it boggles my mind because it's not just, um, you know, it's not like a close one. It's not like Alistair Black. Alistair Black's a close one. You know, it's like I can't say, oh, you know. They didn't see Aleister Black as a top, top guy and look at him now. Um, you know, it's, it is a mistake, like, like you can say with other mistakes, but Adam Cole is, is far beyond that. Adam Cole is simply, everyone knew how good he was and their feeling was he's too small to be big time, you know? And that is just, uh, I mean, when you, when you still have that mentality now, I mean, after he was in your organization, after, if you remember when Adam Cole was brought up when, when they had the, the hostage crisis and they had to bring him up to where, you know, I think it was Boston or Buffalo or wherever that show was. And, and, um, you know, that makeshift car show, which by the way was like one of the best rated SmackDowns of that entire period of time because, because their freaking main roster was stranded and they had to bring up guys and, and the crowd was so excited to see him. Adam Cole comes out and it wasn't like, Oh, he's five foot nine and he's too small and we can't get behind him and, and we're not going to get excited about him because in a real fight or blah, blah, blah. Nobody reacted like that. The only people who reacted like that were, were Vince and Vince's minions. And, you know, they should have given this guy, you know, two million dollar guaranteed contract. They really should have. And they would have kept him with that. And they didn't. And, you know, it's, but that is the big problem is that nobody is honest with Vince. They just tell him what he wants to hear. And they're still sitting there, you know, today when the number comes in with, oh, you know, they're new and they're, you know, they, they got this fan base, but it'll never grow. Um, and we're the ones who are appealing to the wider, you know, fan base. And it's like, you went head to head. You lost. You went head to head. You put freaking Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns, your two biggest stars, the $10 million guys against, you know, in, in a segment and they got beat by the freaking bunny, you know, and, you know, I mean, what can I say? I mean, it's, it's like, unless someone's going to be honest with him, it, it's not going to change. You know, I mean, it's the same thing happened with, with the, when, when Eric, you know, started bringing the talent all over the world and you would watch the two shows and one, you know, but they did, you know, they lucked into Steve Austin, who they didn't see as top talent either, but at least when he got over, they didn't shut the door on him because he wasn't a small guy. You know, he had some size and, you know, who could, you know, whatever, you know, Dwayne's one, Dwayne's one in a million and, you know, they got him at the same time and, you know, that's, and, and also, you know, and the, the other, the other big thing is Eric self-destructed. I mean, WCW, I don't know that they could have won over Austin and Vince and, and The Rock, even if they hadn't self-destructed, because that was a very, very powerful, uh, group of stars. They really were. It's, it's once in a lifetime, practically, situation. But they did self-destruct. They did have, you know, um, and and that was a, a big part of that thing. And and yeah, yeah, you know, perhaps perhaps Tony Khan will self destruct, but he'll never book um he'll never book as bad as, as WCW booked when they uh, ran themselves out of business. That will never happen. Um you know, whatever. But but uh you know, they they, they need to find someone. Um that's what Vince needs to do. He needs to find someone and he needs to find it. And I don't know who that person is. It's no one in that organization and he's not going to do it, but he needs to find someone who will tell him, you know, this is what the problem is. 
and we've got to not do what we did 20 years ago because that's not going to work and not copy what they do because then we're you know we're playing somebody else's game but we've got to go in there and we've got to identify talent a lot better we have to have a better eye for talent because that's where we're getting our ass kicked in is is talent identification uh we have got to do things to please our fan base and god knows when i'm watching raw tonight and i see that charlotte flair match with bianca belair and i'm going like this is really a good match and this is going to be a great coronation for bianca belair you know and it's the right thing to do so they don't have to hand over those belts in that stupid fashion right and then they go 21 minutes, it's really getting hot, and they do a DQ finish, and a cheap DQ, and I'm going like, you're still doing this, and it's like, and you don't get it. You know, nobody else does this anymore. Everybody who did that, they're long, they've been out of business for decades. You can get away with it because you're number one, and, and you've got all the advantages, but that's why this happened, because if, if you were doing stuff to please your audience, and you were getting your audience all excited every week, you know, number one, um, you'd be killing them in attendance because you're the bigger company and you've got way more advantages. And that's not happening. You'd be killing them in the ratings, which isn't happening. And the fact that you're not, you need to look in the fucking mirror because, um, you know, it's it's so obvious. And, um, you know, you know, whatever. Bruce is not the guy. You know, Bruce is still a guy from the 80s. You, you need... I mean, you need a guy, and you need a guy who freaking studies Game Changer Wrestling and AEW and PWG and all of this stuff that you think is, oh, it's so niche and everything. No, that is the future of wrestling. Um, all of these things that are the future of wrestling, the future direction of wrestling, you got to figure out what is the future of wrestling, not the present, the future. And the future isn't the past. And the future isn't even the present. It's who are these guys that are ahead of the curve, that are exciting the audience, that are, you know, getting crowds that are going crazy at their matches, um, who are finding the talent that, you know, that you're not finding and that are, you know, getting something with it with no television, by the way. And they're getting more excitement in their shows than you get. And that, that you know, I mean, that's what you got to study, what the people react to and what gets excitement today. And, um, you know, I don't think anyone in that organization, when you have that view where all wrestling is your organization, you will never get it. And copying those guys isn't what I'm suggesting. I'm suggesting watch and learn from them and figure out what they're doing right. And, not, you know, again, mix it in and, and modern, you know, modernize. You know, it's, it's like, ah, I don't know. I know people who can do it. Um, I talk to them all the time. It's not, but they're not in WWE. And the ones who are in WWE, the few that probably will would be able to get it, they're smart enough to not do it because Vince doesn't want to hear it. You know, he didn't hear it today. You know, today should have been the day. It should have been what went wrong. Why did this happen? And instead, it's like, you know, begin. You know, you heard Roman Reigns basically said the company line, so you know what the company line is. Beginner's luck. We're three years in, in beginner's luck. You know, oh, they have a real fervent fan base, but, um, and they, they, they react too much, too easy for everything they do because their product is so shitty. Their product isn't shitty. Okay. That's, you know, once you figure out, until you figure out that AEW's product is not shitty and AEW's, um, you know, um, stuff is not because of, you know, oh, they're the new kid in town and everybody wants to flock to him. That's never happened before in wrestling. The new kid in town. It's like this is the first time that's happened. So um, anyway, when you figure out that their that their product is much better than yours, because if it was the same as yours, you'd be ahead by the same as you were for you. You'd be the, ahead by a lot more because you got every advantage in the world. Um so their product is much better, and you have to figure out, and until you accept that and go, okay, we're getting our ass kicked creatively. Their creative is better with one freaking guy or five five people in, in the thing and one main boss, and they're beating us. You know, I mean, like last last Friday, I, I got asked, you know, it's like, what would you do, you know, by by people there? And I, you know, I wasn't really thinking about it. I, you know, it was like, what's the question? It's like, oh, you know, you know, 
don't overscript the interviews and and uh you know all the you know um be more open-minded when it comes to new talent and get some guys in their early 20s and mid 20s you know the same stuff i say all the time i didn't really think about it today Reaction was yesterday when when all these numbers were coming in. I started thinking about it and it goes like really like not this. Oh, yeah, they don't need to script their interviews. None of that stuff. What's the problem? What's the problem with WWE? You know, I mean, I watch their TV five hours a week. What you know, seven hours a week. Um, and the big problem is, is that they think they have the best product. That's the problem. They don't. They think it. They think. You know, it's everything that's going on is a fluke. And we're just going to wait it out because we beat Ted Turner. You know, the story we beat Ted Turner and um, we because we waited it out. They were they 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 could get some, you know, some success, but they couldn't sustain it. And all we got to do is sit and wait because we're so much smarter than they are. And unfortunately, that arrogance is what 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 got them there, what got them here. And until they accept the fact that, you know, what is going on, I mean, Jesus Christ, like, like I would, I mean, I would have said this yesterday, but you know, I didn't think yesterday that, that the fricking bunny was going to be, you know, you know what I'm saying? That this was a, this was a big, big thing, you know, and I know some people will say they had more viewers and some people will go, well, they were actually even in the demo. And it's like, you know, you're you're fooling yourself because there was a head to head period and one group had a lot better stuff. And it was WWE. And they and they still lost with the advantage of already being on the air, which is a big advantage. You know, the other guys had to start from scratch. You were on the air for two hours building a freaking show and saved all your big guns for last. And they really big guns. Becky Lynch is a star. Roman Reigns is a phenomenal star. You know, I, with, you know, I mean, some people will deny it, but he is. And Brock Lesnar is is a phenomenal star, too. And they're in a good program. And it's the, it's the best thing they got. Anyway, got any other questions? I would say that about covers it. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.